Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. I am Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, a Senior Listed Advisor for the Exchange. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we have a special guest. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julia Mitchell. How are you ladies doing today? Hi, Chief. Doing good. Hi, How you Chief. Doing, Leah? You got the right angle on that camera now, Leah? We're good? No, I don't like this. I'm on my phone today and not <laughs> my look, computer. But No, you look pretty, Leah. Stop. Okay, you technical challenges. So we're making do with it. <laughs> you're so, looking you're looking great. So let's get this going. Julie, in your best Bruce <laughs> Buffer impression, can you introduce our guest? <laughs> that is so much <laughs> so much pressure. Let me see if I can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the morning for exchange fans watching around the world. We are excited to welcome today's guest, our friends at Muscle Farm linked us up with him. He is a big supporter of our men and women in uniform. He's known for his work in the octagon as an elite mixed martial on artist. We are honored to have him with us today. It's time. Please help us welcome TJ Dillashaw. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was good. <laughs> I told awesome, you to do like the it's time, but she's time. Like, yeah. <laughs> he always gets me pumped up, man. Before I fight that Bruce Buffer, he knows how to uh, get you ready for a fight. I mean, every time he announces my name, I end up yelling back at him because I'm like, I mean, you can't, I mean, being that pumped up in that moment, you know, you're putting everything on the line and, uh, he just he really gets you fired up. So I owe him a, a big thank you for every time I go out there with that kind of energy. You see, Julie? <laughs> Julie, let's do it again. Do it. It's time. We're going to do it. <laughs> it's time. There you go. I think that requires a certain level of testosterone that I don't have. So <laughs> good job, uh, Chief. Good job. You saved the day. <laughs> Awesome. TJ, thanks so much for joining us. We're honored to have you on. Um, and for everybody watching, be sure to drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for TJ, we'll be addressing those all throughout the broadcast. And we want to make sure that your question has a chance to get asked. So be sure to leave those. And if you enjoy Chief Chats, be sure to follow us because we have some really awesome guests lined up for every Tuesday and every Thursday. So we want you to know about those. So follow us. Plus, we have a lot of good stuff. And if you want to enjoy this live with your friends, be sure to um, start your watch party. Well, TJ, such an honor to have you with us today. Thanks for taking time to boost morale for all the service members and their families. Where are you coming to us from? I see you're, you're in the yard somewhere. And, and how have you been doing? Yeah, man, it's a pleasure for me to be on. Um, like you guys said, I, I appreciate you guys, you guys so much. And without, without you, I couldn't even do what I get to do. But uh, I'm up in Northern California right now, a small town called Angels Camp. I'm up visiting family. Um, drove the RV up with, with my family um, to, to visit. So um, in, my grandpa, in my grandpa's backyard right now is where we got the RV park. So just out front hanging out. Is it, it feels good to see the fam, huh? It's been a while that it, quarantine kind of uh, kept you away. Yeah, man. Um, you know, you got to be careful when you got, when you got some family that's, uh, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to pass along anything. You want to be careful and do your part on not spreading this virus. And uh, so we've done a good job of quarantining. Um, I've been able to stay somewhat in the gym and stay active and uh, you got to stay in shape, but I, I wasn't willing to come up and visit family and risk uh, getting anyone else sick. So we finally felt comfortable coming up here and doing so. And, and now we're up here uh, hanging out. Awesome. Hey, so I saw you had a pretty uh, big weekend. You were hanging out with retired Navy SEAL David Goggins and Dan Bilzerian. What was that like? Yeah. Man, is an awesome group of guys. Uh, David Goggins is one of the most inspiring guys I've ever hung out with. I mean, you can't be lazy hanging out with him. You know, he'll wake you up in the morning. You're hitting the gym. Um, that guy's one motivating dude. Um, so I, it was. It was. I've always been. A, I've been a fan of his for a while. But it was nice to actually get to meet him and realize who he is in person. That he really is that. You know, it's not just a character that he's putting on. He really is uh, David Goggins. You know, um, that, that, that those, those seals. And they're a, they're a tough group of guys mentally, you know. So it was cool to be able to hang out with them. I've been friends with Bill Zarian now for a while. Um, he's always good company, a bunch of great laughs. Um, you know, I get to travel the world. And uh, it, it was a good a good business trip, you know. I uh, had some business out in the Virgin Islands I had to take care of. And uh, what better place to do it, you know, and, and some great company as well. 
Good, good deal. Um, so TJ, let's just jump right in. Um, we'd love to know more about you. How did you get started with mixed martial arts? Yeah, uh, I was a wrestler since I was in third grade. I've been wrestling. My dad was a college wrestler. Um, he was coaching the youth wrestling program here in Angels Camp. And so I followed along and just was f watching practices and, and, and joining in. And I got so intrigued in it that I wanted to uh, wrestle myself. And um, wrestling took me to college. I was on a full ride scholarship to wrestle at Cal State Fullerton, uh, which at that time my assistant and he was a fighter in the UFC. And after I graduated college, I really didn't reach the goals that I put for myself. You know, I wanted to be a national. I really feel like I was doing competing. I never thought I'd be a fighter. I never had a plan of fighting or getting inside that cage. I always thought those guys were crazy. Um, but my coach, I started following him around and doing some jujitsu here and there, and I was really good at it. And he talked me into fighting. He said that I was a really mean wrestler. And they thought I'd be good at the sport. And so he talked me into it. And I said, hell, I'll, I'll drop out of grad school. I was trying to become a physician's assistant. I figured I could always go back to school. But uh, I decided to drop out and um, give fighting a chance. I figured I'd give myself a year. And if I was any good, I'd stick with it. If not, I'd go back to school. And the rest is history. You know, I moved up to Team Alpha Male and uh, started training and picked up the sport really quick. What was that, what was that transition like? Because, you know, from wrestling, totally different from striking. How did yeah, it was tough. You know, you think you think getting involved in uh, wrestling or getting involved in MMA that it'd be just an easy transition. You'd be able to just beat everyone up in wrestling, but MMA wrestling is a completely different sport than uh, collegiate style wrestling. And you know, the grappling part I picked up really fast. Being a D1 wrestler, um, jujitsu is not a problem. You know, the, the aggression that a wrestler brings is uh, is such an advantage. But the striking, the striking was something you really had to use your athleticism and and get good at it. Um, it's funny, I had a guy tell me, I was like, if you could dance, you could strike, you know? And so um, having that rhythm and being an athlete, I, I fell in love with striking. I had a Muay Thai coach, Master Tong, that uh, made me get so much better leaps and bounds better in striking right away. Then I had a coach, Dwayne Ludwig, that moved from Colorado to Sacramento, started training us. And man, I became a kickboxer. I fell in love with this so much that kickboxing is now my my strong suit within our fighting. You know, I came in as a strict wrestler, took everyone down and beat them up. But uh, now I'd rather kick you in the head. You know, I'd rather I'd rather go for that <laughs> knockout. And uh, it's something I've really fallen in love with. Dwayne Ludwig has made me a, a strict killer on my feet. So and it's just, I mean, it's, it's kind of mean to say, but it's so gratifying to, to knock someone out inside the octagon. I mean, that's what everyone wants to see when they're watching a fight. And uh, when you do so, it just uh, makes you feel good about yourself, you know? So TJ... Leah and I, we've been doing a lot of research on MMA moves. Yeah. So just so you know, I am, <laughs> I am the queen. I'm the queen of the flying knee, just FYI. And Leah, Leah does a mean guillotine, right, Leah? <laughs> <laughs> and Heck yeah. Chief Reyes, he is all about, what is it, the Superman? The Super, Superman. I'll claim the Superman punch. because There you go. Yeah, that's so about what, it. You're what about hot, you? <laughs> what yeah. about you? What is your signature move? And what advice do you have for people who would like to get started in this sport? Man, I wouldn't say that I have a, a signature move. That's kind of like my strength is that you never know where I'm going to go in a fight. You know, I'm always keeping my opponent guessing. Um, you know, I can out wrestle you, I can out grapple you, or I can out strike you. So depending on my opponent and his weaknesses, where I'm going to take the fight. So I've never really been super known for a. Uh, just a special technique um and i really feel like that's the strength you know if you can keep your opponent guessing you're you're one step ahead that's when i can fake a takedown maybe kick you in the head you know or or vice versa you know start using my strikes to take you down and that's that's what my 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 points of of well, if you want to be a great mma fighter that's what you should do you should your your fighting style should be so elusive and so technical that you can take the fight anywhere so no one can really game plan to fight you um, so that would be my advice if you want to get in, involved in MMA. Make sure you have no weakness. Um, and if there is a weakness, make sure it's very minimal. Because um, it's very hard It's very hard to game plan with a guy that uh, you don't know how to beat him. Great advice. Um, you are getting so much excellent feedback on Facebook right now. So oh, awesome. we have, yeah, we have people watching from all over the country. So I'm going to just read you a couple places. We have Twyla, who is watching from Florida. Um, okay. 
we have Brenda who is watching from Minot uh, up in North Dakota. Yeah. Um, we have Lupe and Manuel. Looks like they're watching. Keesler Air Force Base is watching. Mm -hmm. Um, Washington, D.C. Uh, says that's Jose's up in D.C. watching. And we have a couple questions for you as well. Um, so Brian Hyatt says, I found it hard to stay in shape during quarantine. What were some of the things you did to stay in shape while all the gyms were closed? Um, do you have a home workout gym situation going on? Yeah, lucky enough, I put some uh, mats in my, my garage. I have a hanging punching bag. Um, and then I have a lot of body weight routine things that I could do. Um, I've actually created my own uh, my own Fit to Fight program on my website that kind of goes over some of those things that you could do from home. Um, you know, obviously doing a lot of martial arts stuff is hard at home, but you could, there's a lot of drilling you can do or shadow boxing and things like that. But as well as oh, I have bands, I have, you know, shoot you you can go do some push-ups and pull-ups a bunch to, to stay in shape you know go hit the pavement start running um really get, getting a little bit of creative but um it, it, it's pretty i mean it, it i feel like the truest judge of character is is during this quarantine time if you're able to stay in shape if you're gaining weight um there's no way i was gonna let quarantine keep me down so you know just go and hit, hit those miles you know do the david goggins and go run until you're as tired as you possibly could be um, do, do some push-ups, pull-ups, uh, some shadow boxing, but yeah, lucky enough, I did have a home gym to be able to continue to, to work out in my garage. Excellent. Yeah. Who was that earlier? I see you, you had, uh, oh, my son, this is, this is my son, Bronson. <laughs> Introduce him. What's his name? Hi, buddy. Oh, Bronson. what a he was cutie. curious on, on what I was doing. So he had to come over and say hi. Oh, y'all have the same hi, hair. Buddy. Oh, I know. There, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh what a cutie <laughs> oh thank you thank you <laughs> that's awesome yeah man oh i lost sound yep oh, i got you you hear me now there we go cool i'm good now i got you all right all right looks like leo may have dropped off connection issues but yep. it's all right we're gonna keep we're trucking good. We got all it. Right, cool. We got it. We're going to keep trucking. So we know we know you love our nation's warfighters and their families. Our yes, heroes sir. would love to hear some words of inspiration from you. What can you share with all of them? Man, just, uh, I mean, obviously, like, the, the always, like, if I, if I, I wouldn't be able to do what I can do without you guys. Um, you know, my, my grandpa was a military man, um, and I have a lot of friends in the wrestling world that are military men, and just knowing the sacrifices that you guys make um, is everything, really, to be honest, you know. Um, it's... It's the reason why we get to live this great life, you know. It's the reason why, you know, I'll, I'll represent our flag so proud every single day. Um, and, you know, the reason why I get to have my son with me. And uh, it's just, it, it, it really is everything. You know, there's there's no sacrifice. I mean, you guys make the biggest sacrifice to, to protect us and to make us feel safe at home. Your son's getting some love on Facebook, too. We have people <laughs> really cute. He always does. <laughs> he always does. He, he's, my, he's trying to get me to go put him in the pool or drag me somewhere right now he's trying to he's like get off the phone but <laughs> stop dad yeah, i know i know tj See, we have a question from the field uh marissa connor asks of all the mma greats who are you most inspired by and why um i'd say george st pierre you know he was one of those guys that you know took no short no shortcut no shortcuts had no weaknesses um he's very respectful um they don't feel like did it all right you know he's one of the guys that uh when I got into the sport, I knew he was the best. And you know, not even being a wrestler, he became one of the best wrestlers in MMA. And uh, to see that, especially how hard I know wrestling is, wrestling is one of the hardest sports to pick up. It's the hardest uh, form of martial arts in fighting. Um, without wrestling, I wouldn't be where I'm at today with uh, the dedication I've learned and uh, the work ethic. Um, but I think George St. Pierre is the one that did it right. And uh, I'll always look up to him for that, just the way he handles himself as well. You touched on this a little bit, um, but to protect our nation, you know, warfighters, they have to be fit to fight. So what does fit to fight mean to you? Well, obviously it's my, it's my uh, online program. You know, I'd say we're from teaching you martial arts, to how to do strength conditioning. It's, I put it on my website. It's something like I created <clears throat> what two and a half years ago, um, okay. a way to people have always asking me like certain techniques and always wanted me to coach them certain ways to, to how to fight or how to get in shape or, nutritional um facts and so i had a friend of mine that helped me create the program and i put it on my website it's just tjdillashaw.com but fit to fight is 
not only just physical, it's also mental. Right. And I, I, I touch on it a little bit on my program, but, um, when I, when I think fit to fight, it's all around, you know, it's, uh, like kind of like what I said with, with George St. Pierre, I, I don't take any shortcuts, you know, when it comes to my diet, when it comes to the way I work out, when it comes to my technique, having no weaknesses, um, to me, that's fit to fight. But, uh, I cover all that on my online program and it's, it's done so well. And I always appreciate everyone's feedback and what they would like to see more of, or, you know, um, cause I'll be creating another program here soon. And, uh, you know, I, I expect to continue, continue, continue to put them out there. And this is on, you said tjdillashaw.com. Yes. Yeah. That's where okay. my, uh, fit to fight program is at. Yeah. And then what about nutrition? So, you know, obviously eating well goes hand in hand with living well. So what does your diet look like and what tips do you have for people like us? Yeah, that's a, that's a big part of my career, especially as I get older and older. Um, you know, your, your metabolism doesn't keep up as fast as it used to when I was a kid. I used to eat like garbage when I was wrestling and I really wish I would have known what I know now back then. Um, you know, I, I met a strength conditioning coach down in Southern California. That's why I moved back down to Orange County. Um, because he's the one that helped me, you know, switch my diet up and, and, and make me make those extra gains that one or 2% better of my, my sport so that I can continue to be a world champion. Um, and something's really big on my diet right now is doing a lot of masticating cold press juicing. You know, it, it's actually been such a big part of my life that I actually opened up my own, my own store, clean juice. It's, it's a franchise nationwide, but I opened my own store in Yorba Linda, California. Okay. Um, because I believe in it so much and what it's been able to do for me. Um, you know, my diet, I, I go grain free, tons of greens. I mean, it's almost like keto esque, you know, but I eat a lot mm -hmm. of fruit still. I, I do natural sugars. Other than that, there's no sugars within my diet. There's no grains, things that are going to ultimately boost my hormones and give me the best chance to uh, make the gains that I need to make and, and stay as young as I possibly can for as long as I can. Well, you look <laughs> super young. I'm not sure how old you are and you don't have to say, but you look like really uh, young. So <laughs> I'm 34. I'm 34. I'm getting up there now in the sport, but uh, I got big plans to, to, to stay in for and get my belt back and uh, take over the world still. You look like you're 24. So oh, whatever God, you're doing you. is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Julie, look at that hair. Look at that. Don't worry. A few more years. <laughs> no, I years. like that. The, yeah. He has great hair. I like it. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe I need to get on that juicing program and start drinking the the the, the, the cold pressed juices and everything. Me? Dude, I'm telling you, my, my coach calls it our dim juice. He's got a little secret recipe that he puts together. It's pretty much just put everything in the kitchen sink in it. But, uh, um, it does a lot, man. It helped me out so much with, with my hormone levels. It helped me out with, yeah, boosting my testosterone. I was able to, cause I have, I had some low testosterone, how hard I was working out. When you start redlining your body and boost and, and raising that cortisol levels in your body, cause you're in that fight or flight all the time. Cause you're working out so hard, your body wants to crash, you know? And I know a lot of you, a lot of the seals and guys that go through it, go through the, the buzz training. I know that's what your body will do. Um, and so your diet's a big part of it, you know? Um, any kind of grains and, and flours and wheats and stuff you're eating will turn into sugar in your body. Um, the sugar is the root of all evil, you know, and then, and then also doing that juicing helps me, helps me absorb, you know, 80% of the nutrients that I need out of the, the vegetables. I mean, the amount of vegetables you, that I intake now because of my cold press juicing is insane. And I know it's helped. I've watched it. Me test day in and day out. I've watched it uh, raised just from doing the juicing itself and then also switching my diet up. Um, you know, it, putting that fuel in your body, it's like a race car. You can't put sludge and mud inside of a race car and expect it to perform. And you got to put the right nutrients in yourself to, to get everything out of it, you know, and, and not only just uh, for performance and athletic ability, but also for longevity of your life. You know, you want to help fight disease or just aging in general. And it's, it's your diet. I think diet first, obviously workout next. <laughs> I think you said sugar is the root of all evil. I mean, it really is, man. It's yeah. an addiction. People are addicted to sugar. Um, and if you are going to have sugar, make sure it's a simple sugar. It's from, it comes from fruit. You know, things like that comes naturally from this earth. Um, that man-made sugar is seriously the root of all evil. And people really do get addicted to it. They get addicted more than they do drugs. And it's it's a horrible thing. It, it, it kills lots of people in our nation. Hey, for sure. We have a question here from the field. Richard Ray asks, what goes into your planning process leading up to a fight? A lot, man. Um, so much. I mean, everything from, you know, game planning the way I'm going to work out to game planning who my opponent is. You know, you watch a lot of tape on your opponent. You find his, not only his weaknesses, but his strengths and his, his tells. You know, like everyone's got certain tells on what they're going to do before they do it. Um, 
and creating the, almost like an algorithm of, of, you know, this guy starts out with leg kicks or, you know, he looks down before he kicks high and things like that. That's just opponent specific. But then also what my training camp's going to look like, you know, depending on what weight class I'm going, how much low base I'm doing this training camp, how much strength conditioning I'm doing this training camp, um, how much grappling compared to striking I'll be doing. And then I really game plan it out week by week. Um, and then those game plans just change because I have such a scientific coach that if I'm getting overworked, I sleep with a heart rate monitor on. He knows by my heart rate, my heart rate variability that if I wake up the next day and I'm not recovered enough, that next day has got to be easier. Maybe even I'll even completely take it off. You know, I can't just do hard day after hard day after hard day and expect to be the best in the world. You know, I got to really listen to my body and take those days off. I got to rest. I think a lot of guys don't um, respect the recovery as much, you know, everywhere from me sitting in a hyperbaric chamber doing red light therapy to, you know, um, oxygen loading to oxygen deprivation, doing altitude training. I mean, there's so much stuff that goes into uh, becoming 1% better, 1% better, 1% better every single day. Um, it's a full, I mean, just my supplementation alone is like a full-time job. Um, you know, there's always something I forget throughout the day, but uh, yeah, man, there, there's, there's, there's so much to go. It's a full-time job, just like anything else. You know, it's not, it's not just all fun and games and, and knocking people out. It, it takes a, uh, it takes a lot of work to, to get to where I'm at and to be in the best is uh, taking no shortcuts. So you, you hit on this earlier, right? Mental, mental toughness. Can you talk to us about resiliency? It's been a tough few months for many of us. What advice do you have for people to keep their spirits up and keep fighting? Man, um, I think it's the most important, you know, you can be as athletic as you want or as strong as you want. Um, and it really doesn't matter if your if your mindset's not there, especially because life's gonna throw curveballs at you all the time. You know, um, what I've always been able to be good at doing is whatever negative, which I've had. You know, this last year of my life's been very very tough. You know, 2019 was a tough one for me. I made some mistakes. Um, you know, but you got to turn them into a positive. And actually, because of that last hard year of my life, some great things have come from it. Some actually very 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 great things. It's gonna help take care of me for the rest of my life. And uh, I think turning every negative into a positive, you know, um, all those negatives make your character that much stronger if you're able to bounce back from it and you have to bounce back from it. I mean, um, as human beings, we're, we're made to do so because nothing goes perfect. No fight goes perfect. No, no matter what job you're in, nothing goes perfect. And learning, learning to turn those negatives into a positive and learning how to bounce back from it even better is, uh, and it sounds so generic, but it's so freaking true. Um, it makes you that much better of a human being, that much better of an athlete, that much better of uh, whatever you're doing. And, and uh, everyone's going to have the downs. You know, there's no way your life's going to go perfect. Um, and you're going to have to bounce back from it. And I know I've, I, I've done so in, in fold and I, um, with, within life and now within athletics, I have to come back here in about six months. And so I got a, six months to get ready to get back inside that ring and, and claim what's mine. You know, I'm the, the true king of that band and weight belt, and uh, I'm going to come back and get it. I love it. I love your positivity. I love your reflection on um, self-improvement. I think that's so valuable and so important for, for people um, to be able to hear that, right? Like you do make mistakes, but you can come back. That's, that's a great, great message. And you got to own your mistakes too. You got to, you got to be able to, to come up and say you've made that mistake or whatever happened. It's not so, it's not always someone else's fault. You know, everyone likes to quick to blame someone else, like to quick to, to, to turn the blame off yourself and the, this just happened to you. You got bad luck, you know, and I know many people like that and it's very unfortunate because they'll never turn it into a positive. You're not going to turn that negative situation into a positive. If you're, if you're blaming someone else, you know, take full blame for it. Um, wear it on your back. You know, it's all it's going to do is add strength. So um, yeah, own your mistakes. That's, I think that's the biggest thing I can do. Now that I'm, uh, I can tell you now that I'm really thinking about it is own up to it. And that's how you bounce back from it. So you've mentioned your website and you mentioned training, but let us know, you know, what's ahead for you and what special product projects are you working on? Anything you want to promote or tell us about? Oh, I mean, I've kind of hit on all of it, but really my, my life's uh, been sunk into business this last uh, year and a half. You know, I've, uh, I'm, I've gotten involved with a franchise called clean juice. I plan to open 60 of them in Southern California area. Wow. We've got our first store, first store open right now in Yorba Linda, California, but we'll be opening up here soon. More of them, obviously COVID kind of put a little bit of a, a slowdown on that rate, but um, you know, what better way to, to fight a sickness than keeping your immune system strong? You know, um, I feel like the message has been, has been screwed, um, skewed on quarantine, you know, on, on, 
on worrying about not being around people, which I understand that, right? You got to be careful, mm-hmm. got to be safe, but why not boost your immune system? Why not be taking that vitamin C, soaking up that vitamin D, eating that healthy lifestyle, increasing your immune system as, as strong as possible. So if this thing were to come and catch you, you're able to fight it off, you know? So clean juice has been a big part of my life lately, um, as well as I got my fit to fight program, which will be coming out with a new program here soon. Um, and then now it's just me getting back to training and me getting back to what I love to do. I mean, like I said, this last year and a half, I've sunk myself into business and it's done very good for me. But uh, ultimately my love is uh, being the best in the world at, at, at MMA, coming back and getting that UFC band and weight, band and weight belt. So getting back to training, I got some training partners. We got some big fights. Juan Archuleta is fighting for a world title here coming up soon for Bellator. Mm-hmm. I'll be helping him get ready for that fight, which is also going to help me get back in the ring. And uh, I'm ex- very excited to, there's no, there's no greater adrenaline rush than that walkout before you fight, you know, being in the <laughs> ring and hearing, I mean, I might need you to announce me next time, you know, but uh, hearing, hearing Bruce Buffer announce your name and everyone there, all eyes are on you all in that one moment. Um, there's no bigger adrenaline rush than that. And that, that's what really puts a smile on my face thinking about the future. And so the future for me is getting ready for that fight and getting my belt back. You have a lot of irons in the fire and you have a great positive attitude. Uh, where can we find you on social media or online? I'm easy to find. Everything's just TJ Dillashaw, Instagram, Twitter, my website. Um, that's about as far as I've been able to branch out on the social media. I feel like an old man these days trying to keep up with all this technology, but Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, that's all I can do. There's no, there's no, there's no TikTok or Snapchat or anything for me. So uh, you're not uh, dancing on TikTok. Not, I mean, you no. already talked about your agility <laughs> and your, your footwork. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think that's I, didn't you say if you could talk. dance, you could wrestle or something? Yeah, like that? If you can, if you can dance, you can strike, but uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep that a secret. I'm a, I'm a little too, a little too shy for that, I guess. <laughs> hey, TJ. Yeah, you, guys caught, uh, you guys caught me. <laughs> couple of, a couple of questions from the field. Uh, Andy Piscina asks, what's the worst injury you've ever gone into a fight with? Oh, yeah. man. Um, so I've actually fought. So I got, I've been on a suspension for the last year and a half. So I decided to get double shoulder surgery. I've been needing it for about four years. I had both blown out shoulders. I had a torn rotator cuff, torn labrum, and torn bicep tendon in both shoulders. Um, just bad shoulders, man. I've had them since wrestling. And before my uh, first Garbrandt fight to get my belt back in, back in 2017, so I probably tore it in 2016, my shoulder was just completely blown out. I mean, it would probably dislocate biweekly, um, you know, probably at least twice a month my shoulder would dislocate. But it was one of those things that I couldn't get surgery on it because I'd be out for a year. You know, each shoulder surgery can be out for a year. So I couldn't afford to get surgery. I just had to do whatever I possibly could to stay in the game doing a bunch of physical therapy. I really, to be honest, like I kind of just encased my, my shoulder and concrete with my muscles. You know, I did a lot of band work, a lot of therapy. I traveled and got stem cells done to help out with my recovery. Um, and that's the best I could do, but it would still dislocate. I said to be really careful with, with certain techniques in certain situations. So I'd say the last three years of my career, when I was fighting, I had two blown out shoulders that I've actually very, very thankful that I've been able to get fixed now with my, with my suspension. So that would be the worst injuries I've been fighting with is, is two blown out shoulders. So who, who are you looking, you know, in six months, what, uh, January, 2021, yep. who are you looking to fight? Hoover's got that belt. I mean, really, to be honest, it's my belt. You know what I mean? I had to give it up. So Hoover's got that belt. That's who I want. I don't want no two up fights. I want to uh, push back and get my belt back. Cause I really am the king of the band and weight division. And, uh, Everyone's gonna be put on blast when I get back, man. They're they're uh <laughs> they're right now playing, they're playing hot potato, tossing this belt around like acting like it's theirs, but they know when I come back, that thing's mine. Hey, you heard it here. So, how do you feel about uh somebody else asked? I missed a question earlier, but it's a great time to segue into it. How do you feel about the new fights, the UFC with no crowds? How, how do you think that's gonna play? You think that's gonna play a role? I'm hoping the crowd's back by the time I come back, man. You know, it's uh I like the crowd. I like getting out there. I like slapping hands coming to the ring. I like looking at who's in the front row. I like seeing my family. Um, I have fought with an empty arena, so I, I wouldn't be a stranger to it. Uh, getting on the Ultimate Fighter uh, season 14 back in 2011 or 12, I had to fight a Mandalay Bay big arena with no one in it but Dana White, Bisbing, and Mayhem Miller. You, know, you could hear everything, every <laughs> breath that the guy's taking, every punch landed, every footstep. It's, it's kind of creepy, actually, you know, but um, yeah, so I, I really do hope that the fans are back by the time I can come back because I feed off them, man. I feed off that energy. 
um, if you've never been to a UFC fight, you're missing out because you, you, you'll feel the energy, you'll feel the crowd, and it really, even if it's negative energy, right? Like, you feel it, and it's, it's awesome either way. Outstanding. TJ, any last words for everyone out there in, in the world? Just how much I respect right you guys. Just how much I respect our military, you know, every branch of it. Um, I really said on it before, but uh, you guys make the sacrifices, you know, and I just want you guys to know, like, how, how badass you are for, for doing and, and for, for getting out there and uh, standing up for us, to stand up for our views and uh, keeping our family safe, it's not only your own, but everyone else's, you know, making that sacrifice for, for everyone. Um, so much appreciation as well as with Muscle Farm. Muscle Farm is the one that set this up. They've been a sponsor of mine for a long time now. I've made some great friendships with Muscle Farm and uh, for giving me this opportunity. They've always backed me. They've always supported me. And so I got to say thank you to them as well as thank you to you guys. And uh, yeah, hope we can do it again. Hey, we appreciate it. After, after I get my belt back, I'll have it on my shoulder weighing me down. Maybe we'll do another interview. We'd love that. You've been fantastic. Cool. Great feedback from folks watching. And um, you really brought a really positive energy to our show today. Thank you so much. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Stick around for a second, TJ. Thanks again for spending yeah. time with us today. It's been an honor. We appreciate you. And so do our Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marine, Coasties, and of course, all the family members and everyone watching out there in Facebook land. Thank you Thank so you. much. We're out. Dallas out. <laughs>